So once again, good morning po, and uh, today we are continuing our series on the Gospel of John. Okay? So uh, tayo po in as a chapter 5 na, but before we proceed to our message, let me just ask you this question. Have you ever been hated for doing what is good? Always. <laughs> Ayan. Ano pong ginawa niyo po when you were questioned sa inyo pong motive in doing what is good? Did you try to explain yourself? Did you, oh, kayo in nahimik na lang? Ayan. Alam niyo po, siguro sa panahon natin ngayon, no, nakaka-relate sa atin si Spider-Man. <laughs> Have you watched the recent Spider-Man movie? Huwag po kayo mag-alala, ako po ay no, ano po, ano mo tayo doon? Spoiler! Ayan. But uh, ito pong uh, si Spider-Man, if you know the, yung pong pinakang story, he was blamed for the death of a villain, di ba? And the whole world, di ba? Naalala natin yung story ng the whole world hated him. Talagang galit na galit sa kanya because siya na ngayon ang villain, di ba? Ang kanyang ginawa, he, he, he wanted to save the world from this villain and yet siya po yung naging masama. Ayan. And sa atin din, may mga time sa ating mga buhay, ano? hindi naman natin maipaliwanag yung ating mga sarili. Minsan, tayo po ay nakakaranas po ng ganito pong uh, pangyayari po. Ano? We are blamed for doing or we are rejected for doing what is good. At sa ating story ngayon pong umaga, we will hear this. Ano? We will see dun sa buhay po ni Jesus how he experienced yung pong i-reject siya for doing what is good. So in this uh, chapter, we will see a healing or a miracle story of a lame man na siya po ay mahabang panahon, na siya po ay may sakit. Ano? And Jesus healed him. But what was the response of the crowd? Were they happy? I am so uh, puzzled. I am so astonished about the reaction of the crowd when Jesus healed this lame man. Instead of praising God, and rejoicing with the lame man, what did they do? They blamed Jesus. They rejected Jesus for what he did. Mamaya, malalaman natin kung bakit sila nagalit sa ating pong Panginoong Jesus. And so, in, as a review, we know that this is the third sign of Jesus recorded in this gospel. Di ba? Kung naalala nyo, last time, last week, we talked about healing an official son. And now, ando na po tayo sa third miracle of Jesus that was recorded uh, in the Gospel of John. As we say, marami pong mga miracles ano po, na ginawa po si Jesus that were not recorded in the Gospel of John. But John carefully chose seven signs or seven miracles of Jesus in this Gospel to give us a, an idea or a presentation about the person of Jesus. Who is, uh, who is Jesus? Okay? And so we will... Uh, study ito pong passage po na ito in John chapter 5. Uh, ito pong buong chapter. Medyo mahaba po ito. No? So, huwag po kayo mag We will try to finish bago po mag 11.30 sa ating pong service. Ayan. So, let me just read verses 1 to 2. After this, there was a feast of all of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda which has uh, five roofed colonnades. So, last week, nasa si Jesus, he was in Cana in Galilee, and he made a miracle, naalala nyo, from uh, Cana, Galilee, nagkaroon po ng miracle doon po sa Capernaum. Now, Jesus is now back to Jerusalem, and what is the reason why he is in Jerusalem? The passage tells us that he was there because he was attending a feast. I don't know kung ano po yung feast po niya, if that is Passover or Pentecost or uh, Feast of the Boots, we do not know, but he was there at the feast according to this gospel or this uh, story. And so there, he went to a pool o isang, uh, ano Tagalog sa pool? Merong swimming pool. <laughs> ano Tagalog sa pool? Paliguan. Ayan. Doon sa malapit, doon sa, uh, doon po sa lugar po na yan, ng Jerusalem, by the ship gate. And according to verse 3 to 5, in this lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for, for 38 years. Try to imagine this. He has been sick. Ito pong lame man, and he was there. 38 years. Try to imagine that. Can you compute kung ilang presidente sa Pilipinas 
meron po in 38 years, almost seven presidents. Try to imagine that. Ganong katagal na siya po ay may karamdaman. He was paralyzed. And he had nothing to, kumbaga wala pong tumutulong sa kanya para siya po ay gumaling. He was there, nakahiga lang po siya doon sa kanya pong higaan malapit po doon sa pool. And so the description here is this, is that he is an invalid or a lame man. So sa atin po, ano, lumpo, no? And this is a very amazing story because this man who is so weak, the powerless, he encounters the all-powerful one. The helpless encountered the, the ultimate helper. The weak person encountered the strongest being ever. And so let's see, ito pong pangyayari pong ito, what happened when Jesus went there. Ang sabi po sa verse 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there for a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? Now, I just want you to focus on that first word. He saw this lame man. Jesus saw. He did not just pass by. Hindi lang siya naglakad doon, but he was actually observant. He knows every person there. And according to this word, hindi lang, siya, hindi lang niya nakita ito pong uh, uh, lame man, but he also knew what he has been in the past 38 years, alam ng Panginoon. Ano? So Jesus knows every person. We, can, we, we do not need to, to explain ourselves to, to God because Jesus knows our hearts. Nalalaman niya pong ating pong mga puso. And so nakita po ng Panginoon. And, and for me, as I read this, I find this, uh, na-bless po ako dito I was, I, while I was reading this because Jesus sees the suffering people. He was not there just to pass by, but he observes. And he knows. He knows. I want to highlight that. He knows what you are going through, what we are going through. And so nothing is hidden sa ating Panginoon. Alam niya po ang ating pong kalalagayan. Now, what is surprising here is the question of Jesus. Ito po ang tanong niya ng, Pang ng Panginoon sa kanya. Do you want to be healed? And for that person to hear those Question, sa tingin nyo, ano pong dating sa kanya? Kung kayo po ay sick for 38 years and somebody asks you, do you want to be healed? What, will, you be, what will, will be your response? Will you be offended by the question? Parang offensive yung question. Isn't it obvious? I've been here for 38 years and you're asking me if I want to get healed. Of course, Jesus does not need to know the, the answer of that person to know kung ano yung uh, nasa puso nitong taong ito but he was asking the question not because he wants to know what is in the heart of this person but because he wants this person to assess himself yung kanyang sarili kumusta po ano ba ang kanyang pananaw may pag siya ba ay umaasa pa na siya ay gagaling does he still want to be healed from that sickness and let's see yung pong naging response po nito pong sick man ang sabi po dito the, the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up and while I am going another steps down before me. For 38 years, lagi po ako nauunahan. Gusto ko pong pumunta doon, but no one takes me there. Before I get there, may nauna. Because according to the old, uh, yung mga ibang translations po, there was a superstition in this, uh, parang in this pool, that kapag dumating po yung angel at kinawakaw po yung water, what happens? The first one to get there gets healed. And for him, may disadvantage siya, no? Ano disadvantage siya? He cannot go there, do sa pool, unless someone would bring him there. And before someone parang desires to bring him there, may, lagi po merong mauna na po, no? So, actually, it's just a superstitious belief during that time, uh, during their time in that pool, that they were thinking that this angel of God would, kubaga, would uh, do something to heal those people, and yet, eto po yung yung buhay niya po for 38 years. Lagi po siyang nauunahan. He was helpless. He was sick. At makita natin po yung kanyang uh, nakakalungkot po na kalalagayan. And, and what did Jesus say to him when uh, he said this? Sabi po sa verse eight. 
Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once, the man was healed. And he took up uh, his bed and walked. So makita po natin dito that Jesus gave a command. And for me, I think this, uh, as I read this, ayun po mga kapatid, Jesus did this on purpose. He said to this man to go, to rise up, to get up and to take up his bed and walk. And if you are the, ano, the lame man, what will, will be your response? Siguro, mapapatawa kayo. Ano? Bakit kaya ako inuutusan? Can you just kill me? Bakit, ano, ano ba itong uh, pinapagawa mo sa akin? You know that I am a lame man. How will I be able to carry uh, my bed? And Jesus was actually telling him how to get healed. Ano? And uh, he did what was, uh, kumbaga, ano yung sinabi ng ating Panginoon, he did what Jesus said to him. And he was actually healed. Ang, ang sabi po dito, at once the man was healed. It was a miraculous healing, tama ba? It was a, kumbaga, supernatural healing that he did not go to the hospital nung time po nito. He was healed immediately by the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. So, Makita po natin dito, mga kapatid, yung pong uh, miraculous uh, work of Jesus dito po sa taong ito. It, it was a joyful uh, story. Tama ba? If you are there, if you, knew, if you know this person, siguro nagpupunta ka sa pool, familiar sa iyo itong taong ito. And what will be your, your uh, response do sa kanyang kagalingan? Will you be happy or will you be sad? You will be very Joyful. Praise God. Napakabuti naman ng Panginoon. Pinagaling niya itong lame man. But, makita natin that the response of the people was different. Makita natin sa next verse. Now, I, want, I just want to highlight, ito na nga po, daladala niya na po yung pong kanyang bed. Ano? And, meron po sinabi dito si John. Ano? Now, that day was the Sabbath. Hmm. Meron pong nangyari nung time po ng Sabbath na para sa mga Hudyo ay hindi dapat nilang gagawin. Okay? Because there were prohibitions and restrictions during their time. And that was during the Sabbath day, people were prohibited to do or to work. Okay? So meron po silang tradition. Hindi lang po sila nila pinangawakan ng scriptures, but they were thinking or they, they added uh, many prohibitions dun po sa, sa Sabbath. In fact, as we read this, sabi po sa verse, uh, verse 16 to 17, and this is why the Jews were persecuting Jesus. Ayun po kung bakit? Because he was doing these things. He was healing this layman on the Sabbath. He, hindi sila, kaya sila nagalit dahil pinagaling ng Panginoon itong lalaki sa panahon po ng Sabbath. And they were not happy. Try to imagine that. When they were asking this man, sino ang nag-uto sa'yo na gawin yan? Hindi, hindi mo ba alam na ipinagbabawal yan? Gusto ko lang gamitin yung boses nila. No? Hindi mo ba alam? Diba? Parang ano sila eh? They were uh, furious. Bakit mo dala-dala ang iyong mat? In fact, in the, in the prohibitions, there were 39 additional prohibitions. Wala po sa scriptures, pero dinagdag po nila, ano? Para lamang po ipagbawal po ang work, any work during Sabbath. And number one po dyan, pangunahin na po doon sa pinagbabawal nila, is to carry anything during Sabbath. Bawal po magbuhat. Lahat po, hindi po nila pwedeng buhatin. And so this man was carrying, and so he was violating the Sabbath law of these people. Okay? And so, mayroon natin, isa po yan sa mga ano, no, prohibitions at marami pa po. Ito po ang aking pong tanong, ano, paano kung ikaw po ay may anak na agaw buhay? Hmm, how will you carry your son? And will you just wait for, for the Sabbath to finish? Hindi po ba? And that's why many of them, to the extreme po ng kanilang interpretation dun po sa Sabbath, would not bring people to the physician. That even the physician, some of them think that yung pag, paggawa ng kanilang duty to uh, heal a person who is sick is a violation of the Sabbath law. 
to the extreme. Try to imagine that. Nawala na po yung pinakang essence ng law, ng Sabbath. Ano ba ang essence ng law? Ang sabi ng Panginoon, remember the Sabbath, Sabbath day and keep it holy for the Lord. Because that is the time you stop from all the works in order for you to worship the Lord. In order to, to glorify God together as a community and yet they have so many additions and interpretations of the Sabbath law which made them kumbaga, instead of being happy dito po sa kalalagayan nitong taong ito they were hating Jesus for what He did. Instead of celebrating dahil sila po ay mga ano tayo ito? Um, legalistic. Have you heard of that term? Legalistic? Oh, bawal yan! Oh, bakit kayo tumatawa? Bawal yan. Parang ganyan, legalistic. Ano? Holier than other people. And this is one thing I want to tell those people who are so legalistic. Legalistic people, uh, they do not really, they are not happy in their life. Why? Kasi lagi na lang, ano, you know, bawat kilos, ano, oh, mayroong rules, may mga ba- pinagbabawal, and they, they cannot enjoy. And this time, God did something in their midst, and yet they were not happy because they were blinded do sa kanilang tradition na kanilang idinagdag sa kanila pong mga paniniwala. And so this is something so puzzling para po sa atin. But during their time, we understand the scenario, mga kapatid. It, it seems that Jesus did that on purpose to ask this layman to carry the, the bed because Jesus wants to point out during this time yung kanyang, yung kanyang mensahe. He wanted to correct ito pong mga taong ito na mayroong maling pananaw patungkol sa Sabbath that they actually, uh, kumbaga, they did not really know or they did not uh, have the understanding ano ba yung point nito pong Sabbath. And that is to worship the Lord, to honor Him. Making this day holy is uh, to glorify the Lord sa kanila pong mga buhay. And so, and makita po natin dito yung kanila pong ano, ano, hatred. Now, as we continue verse, in that verse, but Jesus answered them, ano po, nag-guide na po sila kay Jesus, ano, pero may mas tumindi pa sa galit nila kay Jesus. Not just that, uh, what he did during the Sabbath, sabi ni Jesus, but Jesus answered them, my father is working until now, and I am working. Ano po ang naging response po nila dito in next verse, verse 18, this is why the Jews were seeking all the more, mas lalo, no? all the more to kill him because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making him himself equal with God. So Jesus was making here a messianic claim. He was calling God his own father and he was saying that my father continues to work Kayo lang naman ang nagpapahinga. Ang Lord, patuloy na nagpapahinga. Of course, God rested on the seventh day to give an example para sa mga ba- kanyang bayan ano, to honor the Sabbath day. But God continues to work. That is the point. While we are resting, God works. Hindi po, wala pong day off ang Lord na pag lumapit ka sa Kanya at nagsabi ka, Lord, I need you. Ay, sorry, day off ako. Sabbath ngayon, lahat tayo rest. Like to imagine that, if God is resting, how can we even call God during Sabbath day sa ay offline? Walang makikinig po sa atin. But Jesus said, my father is working and so I am working. And now you are persecuting me because I am doing the works of the father as we will continue in this passage. And so, para lang po makita natin ito pong buong chapter 5, let me just give to you the outline of this chapter 5. Ano, the healing of the lame man, verses 1 to uh, 15. The hatred of the Jews, verse 16 to 18. They wanted to kill Jesus. They persecuted Jesus because of what he did and because of his claim that he is the Son of God and making him equal with God. And number three, the heated discourse o yung, yung pakikipag-usap ni Jesus po dito. Uh, if you notice, ano po yung pinakamahabang part po dito sa chapter 5? Na doon sa discourse o yung pahayag ni Jesus patungkol sa kanyang sarili. Tama ba? 
from verse 19 to 47, napakahaba po, which gives us an idea that this is the main point of the whole chapter. Yung pong verse 1 to 15, the healing of the lame man is just a story to point us to something, yung point po ng Panginoong Sus, yung kanyang pagpapakilala patungkol sa kanyang sarili. And so in chapter 5, the story of the lame man is not really the main point. But this is a supporting story for, Je- for what was Jesus uh, going to tell these people about himself. Ano po ang sinabi ng Panginoon po sa kanila? He told him about his divine authority, that he is the Son of God. They were angry towards him, but pinakilala po ni Jesus ang kanyang sarili. And so in this particular message, uh, we will be focusing dito po sa authority po ni Jesus. Bakit po niya ginawa na magpagaling during Sabbath? Parang ano, no? parang sa tingin po ng mga, ng mga Hudyo, kung ito ba ay ang Kristo, why is He uh, doing this? Why is He doing miracles during Sabbath? Isa lang ang katiyakan, according to them. Hindi siya totoong anak ng Diyos. Siya ay nagpapanggap. Because he was doing these things uh, during, the ta- during the time of Sabbath. So they were questioning Jesus' authority. That He is really the Son of God. Now, uh, makita natin dito that Jesus presented three major evidences of His authority. As we will uh, read in the succeeding verses, verses 30 to 31, Sabi dito ni Jesus sa mga Jews, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. So what was Jesus telling here about witness and testimony? San po natin naririnig yung word na Witness. Kailan po natin naririnig po ang witness? Kapag meron pong ju- ah, merong, ano, merong court, ano, may court hearing, correct? May witness. And the testimony of one witness for the Jewish law, even in the, in the uh, Torah, sa Deuteronomy, for, for, the, for example, there, there were stipulations there in the law that ang, is, ang testimony ng isang tao or witness is not valid. It should be two or more. Marami dapat witnesses. And Jesus said, if I am just bearing witness of myself, what I am telling you is not true. I am a self-appointed son of God. Diba? May mga ganun, no? I am the son of God. If I am saying that I am the son of God, not, no testimony or no witness, then I am telling a lie. But Jesus said, there are many testimonies or witnesses that bears witness about my my authority as being the Son of God. At sino daw po yun? The first one is, sabi niya, there is another who bears witness about me and I know that he, or that the testimony that he bears about me is true. Sino po yung una niya pong tinutukoy dito? Si John the Baptist, verse 30, uh, 33 up to succeeding verses. So Jesus proves his divine authority by three witnesses. Tatlo po ang kanya po ditong mga saksi. The first one is the testimony of John. John the Baptist. As, as we read uh, chapter 1 pa lang, makita natin po doon yung pong testimony ni John the Baptist tungkol kay Jesus. Sabi sa verse 30, uh, 33 to 35, You sent to John and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I receive is from man, but I say this thing so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. So you sent to John, but you do not believe in what he testifies about me. He was really testifying about me. Diba sabi pa lang sa chapter 1, I am not the Christ. People were coming to John the Baptist, are you the Christ? Sabi niya, I am not the Christ. I am the one who prepares the way of the Lord. And when Jesus appears in chapter 1, Jesus, uh, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So John the Baptist, being an Old Testament prophet of his time, during the time, ano siya na yung pinakang uh, huling Old Testament prophet, and when Jesus appeared, people were actually, pabaga, kinikilala po nila itong uh, pagiging prophet nito pong si John the Baptist. And that's why many people were coming to him 
Nagpapabaptize po sila and some of them were asking him kung siya ba ang Kristo because they believe that he is a prophet. And this man, John the Baptist, bore witness that Jesus is the Messiah. And he was careful to, to say that many times. For example, in chapter 3, verse 27 to 36, John the Baptist answered those who were asking him, ang sabi niya, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have seen, oh, I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. Masaya ako dahil narito na yung totoong Mesiyas. He must increase, I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speak in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. Verse 32, He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, referring to Jesus, yet no one receives his testimony. In spite of the witnesses of Jesus about himself, his testimony that he came from the Father, no one believes in him, according to John. And so, ano po ang role dito ni John to, to preach about Christ, to tell people, Etong Kristo, that he came not just not from earth, he came from heaven. He is the the uh, living word, the eternal word, the incarnate word. He came from the Father. To, he came to the world upang iligtas po ang sanlibutan. So ito pong si John the Baptist, maganda po yung kanya pong testimony patungkol kay Jesus. But hindi lang po, hindi po sila hindi po pinayuin na wala ito pong si John the Baptist ng mga tao ano, patungkol sa kanyang testimony kay Jesus. Now, we see here another uh, witness of Jesus' authority and that is the Father. The testimony of the Father we read in verse 36. But the testimony that I have is greater than of John. Sabi ni Jesus. Masigit. Kung ano yung, yung uh, of course, G, uh, John is a human, hindi po God si John the Baptist, ha? He is a human, a prophet, a servant of God, and he was there to bear witness about Jesus. So, ang, ang, siya po ang human witness about Jesus. Now, yung witness po ni Jesus is greater than John because his witness is the Father himself. Why? Because of the works that he was doing. And sabi niya, the, uh, for the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing bear witness about me, or about me that the Father has sent me. Ano pong patunay na siya po ay pinadala ng Diyos, Ama? Yung kanya pong mga miraculous works na wala pong sino man ang kakayahang gawin. Try to imagine in the previous chapter that he, he was able to heal a, a person from a distant place, almost 40 kilometers. He just uttered the words, your son will get well or will live and the son got healed. And many other things Jesus did, the miracles that he did, prove that he is really from God. He is divine. Nakikita po natin doon, no? But instead of believing in Jesus, they were opposing Jesus. So dito makita natin po yung pong, ano, no? authority po or yung evidence of uh, miracles na ginawa po ng ating pong Panginoong Jesus that testify kung sino po ang ating pong Panginoon. So, this is the testimony of the Father. So, Jesus explained to him, uh, to them, mga kapatid, that instead of believing in, in Him, do sa kanyang mga works, ano pong ginawa po nila? They were, uh, they were hating Jesus. Now, uh, the third thing na makita po natin dito is, sabi po sa verse, uh, sorry, verse 37, this is a continuation. Ano? And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. Alam niyo po, meron na pong bumaba po sa langit para ipakilala po ang Panginoon. Walang iba kundi ang Panginoong Yesus. Some of us were thinking na kung talagang gusto tayong, gusto ng Diyos, pwede naman siyang bumaba para ipakilala kanyang sarili. Ginawa na po niya. And yet people do not believe in Him. In spite of the miraculous works that He did that show that He is the all-powerful God, 
people rejected him. Number three, another one that testifies about Jesus is the scriptures. O yung banal na kasulatan. Verse 39 to 40, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me, yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. So sabi niya, the scriptures point out to me. It is what bears witness about me. Nakakamangha or nakakapagtaka lang because pinag-aaralan naman po nilang scriptures but they won't accept what the scriptures tell about Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this, mga kapatid. Jesus is the center of the entire Bible, of the scriptures. He is the main person. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation talks about Jesus. Moses, as we continue in this verse, verse 47, For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe in his writings, how will you believe my words? So, ito mga taong ito, they, ba ba bakit po sinabi ni Jesus, they did not believe in Moses' writings? Because they added so many ano, stipulations in the Jewish law. Dami po nila mga additions ano, dun sa kanila pong mga pinainiwalaan. And that's why Jesus said, you do not believe Moses. And if you do not believe the writings of Moses, then you would not believe me. How can you believe me? And the scriptures testify about me. That is the rebuke of Jesus sa kanila. Araw-araw niyo pinag-aaralan ng salita ng Diyos, you are reading that publicly, you are teaching the word of God, and yet, you do not know me. You do not come to me. Jesus is the center of the entire Bible. And he did that. He said that in Luke 24, in his road, uh, in the road to, uh, to, the, to, uh, to Emmaus, naalala niyo po yung two disciples of Jesus walking to Emmaus. Ang sabi po doon sa, uh, sa Luke chapter uh, 24 that, this, uh, uh, that Jesus explained to them everything from the law uh, from Moses and all the prophets. He interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Concerning himself. Grabe po, no? The whole scriptures. At ito pong scriptures, most of them were written almost 700 years before Jesus. All of these uh, all of these writings testify that Jesus is the Messiah. Do you know how many prophecies were fulfilled in Christ? Not just five? Kung five, parang aksidente lang, eh, no? Ten? Di pa ganun karami. One hundred? No. 400 prophecies from the Old Testament. Jesus fulfilled all those prophecies when He came. These writings, ito po ay mga sinulat almost hundreds years, several hundred years before Jesus. And yet, it, it came to pass when Jesus came. And yet, they did not believe in Jesus in spite of the testimony of the Scriptures. Ayun, ito, ito po para sa akin, ha, mga kapatid, ang pinakamatinding batayan Kung bakit ako naiiniwala na si Jesus ang tunay na anak ng Diyos, that He is the Savior of the world because the Old Testament scriptures pointed every at pointed to Jesus. That every uh, the Old Testament, yung pong mga prophecies doon ay nagpapatunay na si Jesus po ang anak ng Diyos. And so meron po tayong matibay na pinangahawakan. We have the certainty of truth because the scriptures testify about Jesus. I want to highlight verse 40 because sabi po dito, in spite of that, that you search the scriptures, nag-aaral po ba kayo ng scriptures? Mahilig po ba kayo magbasa at mag-meditate? Uh, Ang sabi niya sa mga to, you search. Grabe kayo mag-search ng scriptures and you, some of you have memorized cover to cover. At ang sabi, because you think that in them you have eternal life, that is why, uh, that is a uh, day that bear witness about me, the scriptures, yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. Yung pong totoong reason kung bakit po nila pinag-aaralan ng scriptures, binabaliwala po nila. And for them, they are studying the scriptures for the sake of the scriptures, not for the sake of knowing or for the purpose of knowing Jesus. So this is their problem, mga kapatid. And so I want us to reflect on this, mga kapatid. Do you study the scriptures? Oh, does our study of the scriptures point us to Jesus? 
Kumusta po mga kapatid? Mas lalo ba tayong napapalapit kay Kristo? O mas lalo tayong nagdududa kay Kristo? Lalo natin pinagdududahan siya. Uh, if that is our approach, na pagdudahan po natin ang salita ng Diyos, then we will not be able to know Jesus. So we need to have the attitude of humility and submission sa salita ng Panginoon. As we study the Word of God, we recognize Jesus because the Scriptures point out uh, point to Jesus. Now, uh, as a review, the witnesses of Christ, tatlo po ito, no? John the Baptist, the Father, based on the works that he was doing, and the Scriptures, all of this testify that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. He is divine. He is God. Okay? Now, what was the response of the Jewish people? May natin dito, the rejection of Christ's authority. Hindi po nila tinanggap. Wala silang pake. Pinareset na ni Jesus sa kanila yung evidence. Ito na evidence mga kapatid. O, nakasulat to sa Old Testament. Eh. Ang dami mga witnesses, eh. tatlo. Eh. Hindi pa rin kayo naniniwala. Eh, no? Nakakalungkot. Ano? That even in time of Jesus, hindi lang pala sa panahon natin laganap ang fake news. Even during the time of Jesus, you presented the truth and yet, uh, we, we do not believe in that because we just want to believe whatever we want to believe. Bagay yan po ang mga paniniwala ng mga taong biktima lagi ng fake news. They just want to believe what they want to believe. They are not grounding their reasonings on the truth. And Jesus was saying to them, I have these testimonies and yet you do not come to me. Pansinin po natin yung mga verses po dyan. Ano? Despite the overwhelming evidences and convincing proofs that Jesus, of Jesus' divine authority, the Jews did not believe in him. Hindi kami believe sa iyo. Ikaw pa rin ang villain sa amin. Ikaw ang kontrabida. Ah, we read in verse 38, And you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one he has sent. Hindi kayo sumasampalataya sa akin. Verse 40 to 42, Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I'm, give, I'm offering life to you. And what are you doing? You are kill, you're trying to kill me. That, is, that seems so ironic. Tama ba? That they are seeking to kill the one who gives life. Nakakalungkot. Ano? This is what, this is the response of the people, the Jewish community to the Son of God, to Jesus. Sabi niya, you do not come to me to have life. I do not receive glory from people, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. Ano pong reason why they they reject Jesus, wala yung pag-ibig ng, pa- ng Panginoon sa kanilang mga puso. The problem is not the absence of evidence because there are so many evidences that, that testify about Jesus' authority. It is not the absence of evidence, but it is the condition of the heart. Pag ang tao, saradong puso, kahit ipakita mong katotohanan, sarado talaga, ayaw buksan. That is the problem of the human heart. Ayo kilalanin ang authority ng ating pong Panginoon. Hindi ba dati, ganun din naman tayo, no? saradong-sarado. Ikinandato pa nga natin. Eh. At yung susi, itinapon natin sa dagat. Di ba? Nagyan tayong ano, kasabihan. Sobrang sarado. Kahit eto na, ang lino lang sinasabi ng scriptures protocol kay Jesus. Hindi kami believe sa iyo. They did not come to Jesus. Sabi sa verse 43 to 44, I have come in my Father's name and you do not receive me. Anong opposite ng receive? Reject. Ano? You did not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. Kung sino pumunta dyan, magsabi na, oh, ako ang anak ng Diyos, eh, probably you would believe them. But how can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Hmm. Mapansin po natin dito the reason why they reject Jesus because of their self Pride, self-glorification. They think they can be right sa Panginoon even though Jesus is not there because they were thinking uh, we are doing the, what the law says and so we are righteous in the sight of God. They are glorifying themselves. They are not finished with themselves yet. That's the problem, mga kapatid. If we are only thinking about ourselves, if we are not done with ourselves, we, we will not really... Uh, Christ will not reveal Himself to us unless 
we let go of ourselves. We allow Him to speak to us. Because sometimes it is pride. Ito po ang kalaban. Ano, yung ating mga puso sarado. Kahit anong, pagka, anong presentation ng katotohanan, we do not accept it because our hearts are blinded. Sabi, yeah, how, uh, sa verse 46, For if you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? So hindi lang kayo, hindi sumasampataya sa akin, hindi rin kayo sumasampataya sa aking mga salita o sa aking mga sinasabi. Now in summary, sabi dyan, they do not, number one, believe in Christ. They do not come to Him, verse 40. They do not receive Him and they do not believe in His words. This is the problem of these people who were questioning Jesus for what He did. Napakaganda na ginawa niya. He, he uh, healed the lame man and yet they were rejecting Jesus. Ayun, ito pa lang, ito problema mga kapatid ng isang deceive, ano? Kahit anong pahayag ng katotohanan, he would not receive it. Kasi nga po, sarado po ang puso. And so they, they tried to condemn Jesus and they, they persecuted him. This is how the Jewish community during the, the time of Jesus responded to the Messiah, the Son of God. They rejected Him. And this is also my question to us. Kumusta po tayo? How do we respond to Jesus' authority? Maybe that's, that's them. We are saying, ah, mga hudyo yan. But, but me, I believe in Jesus. But do we really believe in Him? Kumusta po ang ating pong mga buhay, mga kapit? Do we come to Jesus? Do we believe in Him? Do we receive Him in our lives? And, and do, be, do we believe in His words? The question is, am I taking Jesus' words seriously? Or parang bali wala lang po sa atin? That is our problem. Means, know, Jesus wants to, to show Himself to us, to reveal Himself to us when we study the Scriptures, but we are not, sometimes we are not taking Jesus' words seriously. Diba? Minsan sarado po ang ating pong isipan. Kumusta po? Do we really believe na totoo po si Jesus? Kung totoo po si Jesus, dapat po totoo po siya sa ating buhay. I remember the story of Edmund Chan. I cannot forget his story, that, the turning point of his life. He always says it sa kanyang mga testimonies. He was a backslider, meaning for several years, siya po ay namumuhay ng talagang wala siyang, uh, kumbaga, wala siyang pakialam sa Diyos. He was rejecting God in his life. And during the time, yung kanya pong girlfriend na naging asawa na ngayon, kinumpuranta siya, no? do you believe in Jesus? Yes, I believe in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, then why is your life like that? Sa atin, ang daling sabihin, tayo po ay naniniwala. If you believe that Jesus is true, naniniwala tayong totoo po si Jesus sa ating mga buhay. Do we really seek Him? Do we follow Him? Do we respond to Him? Does our life show our faith in Christ's divine authority? Nakikita po ba sa ating mga boy? Are we taking Jesus' words seriously? Kumusta po tayo mga kapatid? And minsan mga kapatid, ha, in our life, although we think we are studying the scriptures, but in our lives, hindi po nakikita na si Kristo ay nasa sa atin. Minsan gano po ang ating pong problema. And so we need to ano to 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 learn from this mistake of the Jewish community. Tama ba? Nagkamali na sila eh. Wag na po tayong magkamali, mga kapatid. We're just studying this to know how they responded to Jesus. This is not a good example for us to follow. Jesus has given us all of these evidences and what should be our response? Response. Go to Jesus. Come to Him. Our faith rests in certainty because Jesus has proven His divine authority through many witnesses. The Father, John the Baptist, and the Scriptures all bear witness about Him. So we have that certainty. This is something that we can take hold of hanggang huling panahon ng ating buhay, mga kapatid. 
Meron tayong katiyakan. May katiyakan tayo ng katotohanan dahil si Jesus ay hindi man loloko, hindi po siya mandaraya. Siya ay nagsasabi ng katotohanan. And that's why he says in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We have the certainty of truth in Jesus Christ. And the challenge is, will you believe in Him? Will you trust Him? And will you obey Him? Will you come to Him? Sabi ni Jesus, they are searching the scriptures, but they do not come to me to have life. Come to Jesus. Believe in Him. Because there is no other Savior who is able to save us from sin and death. Apart from Christ, we are all doomed because our destination is death. Jesus gives life. You do not come to me to have life. What you want is death. Yan yung sabi ng Panginoong Jesus. But we need to come to Jesus because there is no life apart from Him. Apart from Jesus, matatapos lang po ang buhay po natin. That's the reality. That's the end. Matatapos, mamatay po tayo. And according to the scriptures, when we die, we will be judged, we'll be condemned at the judgment day. Pero ano po ang, ang pinapakita po sa atin ng scriptures? We need Jesus. Pagtiwalaan po natin siya sa ating mga buhay. At diyan po natin ibatay ang ating pong katiyakan ng certainty ng ating pong buhay. And I'm telling you, if you believe in Jesus, you have the assurance. You have the assurance of eternal life. You have the assurance na kahit anuman mangyari sa buhay mo, meron ka pong katiyakan at pag-asa para sa buhay po na walang hanggan. This is Jesus that was presented to us in the Bible. And the challenge and the question for us ngayon pong umaga is, will you receive Him? Have you received Jesus? Have you believed in Him that He is the Savior of the world? And have you personally trusted Him for your salvation? If not yet, maybe this is the right time to respond to Jesus, to acknowledge Him, Lord, I believe in you. Tayo pong lahat ay tumayo. And let's come to God, to Jesus in prayer. Father, thank you so much for sending your only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish, will not die from sin and death, but will have the eternal, eternal life. Lord, at times, Lord, we reject You. And so many times in our lives, in spite of all the evidences of your divine authority, Lord, we live as if you do not exist in our lives or we want we want, Lord, to commit to you we want, Lord, to respond to you we come before you because there is no life apart from you heaven and earth will pass away, O Lord and there is no uncertainty if we do not have the certainty of truth but thank you, Jesus, because you have revealed yourself to us. And because of that, Lord, we can have this blessed assurance. And we believe in you, Lord Jesus. We believe that you died on the cross for our sins to pay the penalty for our sins. And we thank you, Lord. We respond in faith for what you have done for us, for, for us to be saved from sin and condemnation. Father, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus, for your great love for us. Salamat po. Ito pong aming pong dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen.